guys, welcome back to the Emily and Mark Reading Show. Hi. So today our theme is going to be New York, which is where we are. So I will be reading Lisa in New York, and Mark will be reading Lisa's Airplane Trip. This is all about Lisa, which is a rabbit's trip to New York. And it's really cute, and these books are really fun, and I hope you guys enjoy them, and let's go. Lisa's Airplane Trip by Annie Gunman. I'm Lisa. Guess where I was last week. In a big plane over the ocean. I was fine by myself for the very first time. My seat was next to a blue lady. Don't be afraid, she said. And please try not to move around so much. But it's the plane that's moving, not me, I answered. After a while, she moved to another seat. I don't know why. Then I had three seats all to myself. I could even lie down, so I took a little nap, but now, but not for long. Because a nice airplane they came by with a big tray of food. Oh wait, it was time to eat. I got lots of things. A glass, a dish of beef, carrots, and peas. And plastic knife, fork, and spoon, salt, cheese, pepper, Bar in the can, a wool, bar, cherry jam, an empty mug, and a giant orange juice with a cherry. A voice said, ladies and gentlemen. With the headphones in your seat pocket, you may now watch the movie Cowboys Forever. I put my headphones on, but I had a little per problem. I couldn't see very much until I found a way to look over the big seat in front of me. It wasn't very comfortable, but the movie was so exciting. I didn't mind too bad. I missed the end. I moved and then so did my glass and oh no, what a mess. The orange just went everywhere. The airplane they came way away. It's okay, she said. We'll fix this mess there. What's their name? Lisa, I answered but I couldn't hear very well. I even had orange juice in my ears. Then she gave me a bath on the airplane 
what fun. She dried me off and said, Lisa, I have a surprise for you. She took me into the cockpit with the pilots. There were the buns everywhere, even on the ceiling. I couldn't touch them, but the pilot told me what they, they, they do. You smell very nice, he said. It was the soap. When I went back to my seat, I could see big buildings from my window, but from this high, they looked like toys. The pilot was white, the soap did smell good. And so all clean, I landed in America. I saw my uncle White away. He was holding a sign. We called my parents, but we forgot that it was the middle of the night in Paris. So we woke them up. It's okay, Lisa. My dad said, have fun in New York. The end. Yay! <laughs> Lisa in New York by Ann Gutman and George Hallad Seven. I have an uncle who lives in a skyscraper in New York City, and for my birthday, he sent me a plane ticket to come and visit him. Uncle Harrison is the best uncle ever! Every day we went sightseeing. We were always in a hurry because there was so much to see. Statue of Liberty. We took a boat to see her. It was very windy. The Brooklyn Bridge. And more bridges. The funny looking Flatiron Building. and lots of skyscrapers. We also went to Central Park, but my favorite place was Times Square. We went there to buy my souvenirs. I found something from my friend Gaspard right away. A Statue of Liberty nightlight. Even better than the electric gondola that he bought for me in Venice. We were going to buy a book for my parents. But on the way to the bookstore, I saw something wonderful in a store window. It was a circus made entirely of cake. I stopped to look at it, and when I turned around, Oh no, my uncle has disappeared. I was lost. But I'm no baby. I knew just what to do. I found a policeman and he told me to go to the information desk 
where they would make an announcement over a loudspeaker to find my uncle. The information lady couldn't see me. I jumped up and down. Then she picked up a phone and a loudspeaker said, Little Lisa, your uncle is waiting for you on the 64th floor. I was saved! I got on the elevator, but I had a problem. I couldn't reach the button for the 64th floor. So I stood on the Statue of Liberty. Just as I pressed the button, I heard a loud crack. Oops, her arm broke. Then the elevator opened and there was my uncle. I told him about the circus made of cake, but I don't think he believed me. You have a big imagination, he told me. But later, when he kissed me goodnight, he promised that we could go back to Times Square tomorrow. I would show him that there really is a circus made of cake.